The men of the 7th Infantry Division, known as the Bayonet Division, were on the verge of being overrun by the superior numbers of Chinese Communists. One of the many GIs caught under the surprise night attack was Private First Class Jack Hansen, a machine gunner with Company F, tasked with defending the two hills at Pachidong, Korea. The intense enemy fire and the roar of explosives deafened Hansen's buddies, but they kept firing clip after clip, magazine belt after magazine belt. As the enemy advanced toward his position, Hansen's men were wounded and required evacuation and treatment. Instead of running for safety, he covered everyone else's retreat, knowing more of his comrades would make it back if they had cover fire. Amidst the chaos, Hansen stood firm, his machine gun's barrel running hot after non-stop fire. He stood alone against the tide of enemy forces, a lone sentinel facing adversity. After expending all his ammunition, Hansen took his pistol and a machete, ready to honor the nickname of his division, the Bayonet Division. The Korean Peninsula fell under Japanese rule in the aftermath of the Russo-Japanese War of 1904. The Empire and the Rising Sun had annexed Taiwan years before, and Korea was the natural step towards carving an empire for the Japanese Tenno. The peninsula was officially annexed by Japan in 1910. What followed were three decades of brutal cultural suppression and forced labor. The harsh occupation ended in the volatile aftermath of World War II. With Japan's surrender, the peninsula was liberated, but peace never left the countryside, for the country was divided into two occupation zones along the 38th parallel. The United States occupied the South, while the Soviet Union took over the North. Although the division was intended to be temporary while the victorious nation set the goals to establish a unified Korea, the geopolitical tensions of the Cold War complicated the project. China, engulfed in a civil war between the Republican forces aided by the U.S. and the Communist guerrilla aided by Stalin, slowly fell under the control of the Marxist flag. Consequently, the ideas of the hammer and anvil made their way into North Korea, sealing the fate of a unified peninsula. Thus, North and South Korea were officially established in 1948 as sovereign states. Syngman Rhee became the president of South Korea, while Kim Il-sung became the leader of North Korea. The peninsula became a cauldron of political tensions and clashes between the two new nations, despite the political agreement. To the world's dismay, the North Koreans launched a massive, lightning-fast invasion of South Korea on June 25, 1950. The uneasy peace had finally led to total war, and the United States military and its allies had been caught with their guard completely down. The communist North Koreans, supplied by China and the Soviet Union, crossed the 38th parallel with relative ease ravaging the countryside and steamrolling the opposition with the effective use of Red Army heavy armor and an overwhelming number of infantry troops. Kim Il-sung's forces tore through the south with a ferocity that stunned the world. The American garrisons, armed only with outdated M24 Chaffee tanks and fewer M26 Pershings, did not fare well against the Soviet tanks, leading to a hasty retreat. The fight for total control of the peninsula, fueled by the aspirations of a divided nation and the strategic interest of global superpowers, set the stage for a war that would claim millions of lives. Nevertheless, the American troops, led by World War II hero General Douglas MacArthur, reacted quickly and immediately counterattacked with all the forces available in the Pacific region. Among the forces gathered by the victor of the Japanese Empire was the legendary U.S. Army 7th Infantry Division. Also known as the Bayonet Division or Hourglass Division, the 7th's origins date back to World War I. The division was activated in December 1917 at Camp Wheeler, Georgia, as part of the American Expeditionary Forces dispatched to Europe to fight the Prussian Empire. During the war, the 7th Infantry Division participated in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, one of the final and largest offensives of the war, playing a crucial role in breaking through the German defenses and advancing toward the Meuse River. The Bayonet Division nickname was earned in battle after the perilous bayonet charges the infantrymen conducted against the Hun and the dense forces of the Argonne. The men surged forward in the middle of enemy fire to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat until they prevailed against the Teutons. The 7th Infantry was deactivated in 1921, but later reactivated in 1940 in response to rising European tensions. During World War II, the 7th Infantry participated in numerous Pacific theater campaigns, including the Aleutian Islands Campaign where it conducted amphibious landings to retake strategic islands from Japanese forces. The men at the 7th also played a crucial role in the liberation of the Philippines in 1944 and 45, particularly during the battles of Leyte and Luzon. From amphibious assaults to capturing key objectives and engaging the enemy in intense jungle warfare against well-entrenched Japanese forces, the 7th proved its worth, 
fighting without rest until Okinawa fell under its control. When General MacArthur called the 7th Infantry to join the fight against the enemy, Major General David G. Barr readied his men at Camp Fuji, Japan. The Major General quickly noticed the harsh reality. The division lacked manpower and equipment. Furthermore, the few men available were dispatched to reinforce the 1st Cavalry and the 25th Infantry Divisions, fighting the North Koreans in the peninsula. As a result, the fighting strength of the division was reduced to 50% of its total capability, with just over 9,000 men. Major General Ba replenished the ranks with some 8,000 South Korean allies from the Republic of Korea Army and other United Nations units to get the division back in fighting shape. Among those who would constantly serve in the legendary Bayonet Division throughout the conflict were the Colombian Battalion and the Cognu Battalion from Ethiopia. Now at full strength, the 7th joined the U.S. 10th Corps to prepare for Operation Chromite, the Inchun landings. With the support of the 1st Marine Division and over 230 warships from the U.S. Navy, the Bayonet Division embarked on a daring mission to liberate Seoul from the clutches of the Korean People's Army. With the element of surprise on their side, the Marines and the Army stormed the shores of Incheon on September 15, 1950, sending shockwaves through the enemy ranks, who previously had only fought American forces that were outnumbered. The 7th Infantry, following in the footsteps of the 1st Marine Division, launched a relentless assault on the city, fighting the defenders from all sides. The division pressed forward, despite fierce resistance, carving a path through enemy lines. As the battle raged on, miscommunication and unexpected attacks from the communists threatened to disrupt the steady progress of the 7th. However, with the assistance of air support from the 1st Cavalry Division, the infantrymen emerged victorious, liberating Seoul and capturing the retreating communist troops. Overall, the eager bayonet division lost 106 American men, 400 wounded, and some 50 MIA. As for the South Korean allies, 40 were killed in action and 102 were injured. Yet, as the GI celebrated their hard-won victory after bringing peace to Incheon and Seoul, a new threat appeared on the horizon. The entrance of the Chinese People's Volunteer Army to the conflict, plunging the American and United Nations troops into a new and even deadlier phase of the war. There was no rest for the seasoned warriors of the 7th Infantry. The young men had to write back home to let their families and sweethearts know the war was starting and they were in for the long haul. The Chinese PVA attacked en masse in late October 1950. American and ROK garrisons stationed at the front lines dealt with them with all the strength they could muster before additional units arrived to push the enemy back. As soon as military intelligence determined the Chinese movements, the 7th Infantry was ordered for another campaign. The seasoned soldiers and their allies landed at Wonsan and Iwan during the last week of October to stop the communist advance. As for the landings, they were far from easy. U.S. warships struggled to land on time due to the heavy presence of enemy mines. The 10th Corps worked at sea while the ROK moved to secure the ports. Once the American divisions landed, the Bayonet Division was ordered to march directly into the city of Hyesan, North Korea, near the border with China. The location, near the historic Yellow River that divided Korea from China, became one of the farthest zones occupied by GI troops. The Army, Marines, and South Koreans dug in deep by late November 1950 and awaited orders for a renewed offensive, which came precisely before the Chinese launched their second invasion wave. Clashes with the Communists were brutal. Following the footsteps of their Soviet counterparts, the Chinese attacked with overwhelming numbers, leading to ferocious hand-to-hand -hand combat that scattered U.S. and ROK emplacements. The 7th Infantry was attacked by several Chinese armies that surpassed 10 divisions. Stranded and besieged, three battalions of the division, including the bold Task Force Faith, faced the full fury of the enemy's assault at the Battle of Chosen Reservoir. Surrounded, they fought bravely but were ultimately beaten by the overwhelming PVA forces, leaving behind over 2,000 fallen comrades. Despite the valiant efforts of the 17th Infantry, who managed to retreat along the Korean coastline, the division sustained staggering losses, with 40% of its ranks falling in the line of duty. As the division fought tirelessly to reach the port of Hongnam for evacuation, they faced relentless attacks, adding another 100 to the list of fallen heroes before finally being evacuated on December 21st, 1950. The scars of battle ran deep, with 2,600 brave souls laying down their lives and 350 wounded during the grueling retreat, most notably among the gallant soldiers of Task Force Faith. Yet, undiscouraged by their losses, the 7th Infantry Division returned to the front lines in early 1951, determined to reclaim lost ground and push the enemy back. 
led by the 17th Infantry, the division embarked on a series of daring offensives, engaging the enemy in fierce battles around Chichon, Chongju, and Pyeongchang. The Bayonet Division slowly but steadily advanced, driving the enemy forces back above the 38th parallel and away from Seoul. In a dramatic three-day battle near the Watron Reservoir, the division fought tooth and nail, ultimately emerging victorious and reclaiming lost territory. The GIs from the Bayonet Division fought with patriotism and camaraderie that emulated the men who fought during World War II. Such was the case of Private First Class Jack G. Hansen from 1st Platoon Company F, 31st Infantry Regiment. While stationed at Pachi Dong, a superior enemy force attacked Hansen's position. As a machine gunner, Hansen opened fire to suppress the enemy, while his buddies emptied clips from M1 Garands at an alarming rate. It was 3 a.m. It was dark. The men had barely had a good sleep. But the GIs, knowing their lives and the defensive position were at stake, fought with the desperation of lions. Positioned on a crucial hilltop, Hansen's machine gun became the linchpin of defense for his company. They faced a relentless assault that sought to overrun the two hills separated by an ample saddle. As the enemy closed in, Hansen's unit suffered casualties, and the threat to their command post grew imminent. Four infantrymen were severely injured and had to be evacuated, reducing the unit's combat strength. Still, Hansen continued firing at the enemy without rest, his machine gun's barrel smoking hot. Wave after wave of enemy platoons were destroyed under his accurate fire. But there was only so much that could be done by one man against a numerically superior force. Despite orders to relocate to a safer position, Hansen chose to stay behind, risking his life to provide covering fire for his comrades as they withdrew. The night fell upon Hansen when the enemy finally breached the perimeter. He had to use his senses to target the enemy or fire at the muzzle flashes of the Chinese. A machine gunner remained in his position, even after his assistant gunner, another rifleman, had been wounded and retreated to safety. The lone warrior refused to withdraw and held the line, making every round count. Other soldiers remember hearing the machine gun firing for a long time, even after the retreating GIs had made it to safety and the enemy completely took the position. When the first platoon regrouped and launched a counterattack to reclaim their positions, they found Hansen's body lying in front of his machine gun emplacement. His ammunition depleted, pistol empty, and a machete in hand, Hansen had fought fiercely until the end. Twenty-two vanquished opponents lay around him as proof. Hansen's courageous actions allowed his company to hold the ground, repel the enemy, and regain control of the strategic high ground. Private First Class Hansen's unwavering bravery and ultimate sacrifice epitomized the highest ideals of military service, earning him a posthumous Medal of Honor that embodied the fighting spirit of the Bayonet Division, which continued fighting until the end of the war in 1953.